Hey Mustangs, in this video we're going to be taking a look at the light dependent reactions of photosynthesis. So before we get into it, I want to make sure that we're all on the same page here, that we understand uh, the basics of what's going on. So remember photosynthesis is going to take place in the green parts of the plant and specifically inside the chloroplast. So if you take a look at this picture here, uh, we have a zoom in of the leaves here and you can see uh, the tiny little chloroplasts found in the mesophyll cells here. You can see the veins that transport stuff uh, throughout the leaf. And you see the stomata, which are tiny openings in the leaf uh, that allow carbon dioxide to go in and oxygen to leave the leaf. So when you zoom in on a mesophyll cell, you can see all the little circles here. All those little circles represent our chloroplast. And uh, within the chloroplast, the key parts to remember, of course, are the thylakoids and your st uh, stroma. Okay, so the stroma and the thylakoids are the key parts of where the two stages of photosynthesis are going to occur. Our basic equation for photosynthesis, uh, you have six carbon dioxide molecules, six water molecules, going to get you glucose and six oxygen molecules. When you look at the equation, you can tell a lot from it. Um, one, the fact that your carbon dioxide is going to be reduced by adding hydrogens on your water is going to be oxidized by losing hydrogens. When we take a look at the two stages of photosynthesis, um, we could break it down into the light dependent reactions and then the Calvin cycle. So here on the left, we see the light dependent reactions where they happen inside the thylakoids. Light and water go into a thylakoid here and out is going to come your oxygen, your ATP, and your NADPH. So that's the light dependent reactions and that's what we're going to focus on right now and then we'll be getting into the Calvin cycle later on. So before we move on, a little bit more review here. We have the uh, reason for why the light dependent reactions occur. The whole point of the light dependent reactions is to convert the energy from the sun, solar energy, into chemical energy stored in ATP and NADPH. So that's the focus of the light dependent reactions, the very first stage of photosynthesis. So it's not even to make our sugar yet, not even to make glucose yet. It's uh, focused on trapping the energy in chemical energy instead. Right. Photosystems are important to know. So when we look at the parts of the photosystems, we see the reaction center complex. Uh, inside the reaction center complex, we have a pair of chlorophyll A uh, pigments. And we also have our primary electron acceptor. And then you go to the outside of a photosystem and you have the light harvesting complexes, which are composed of proteins and other molecules, along with one of the most important parts, which is the pigment molecules. These pigment molecules can be chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B, or even your carotenoids. When you look at a photosystem, understanding that photosystems are super, super important and the first thing that happens in um, photosynthesis is going to go down right here inside your photosystems, we see that a photon, um, energy, light, is going to strike a pigment. Okay. When it strikes a pigment in your light harvesting complex, that's going to excite the electrons. That shows that the energy has been absorbed and the electrons become excited. They become a higher energy state. As they start to drop back down, that energy gets passed to another pigment molecule, which excites its electrons to a higher energy state. As it drops back down, it's going to go on from there. So basically at this point, it's a chain reaction of passing on the energy, exciting electrons, going back down to ground state, till eventually it gets to the um, chlorophyll A molecules in the center here. And those, the thing that's going to happen different from here, is instead of the electrons becoming excited and falling back down to ground state and passing on energy, it's actually going to donate its electrons to the primary electron acceptor. So these two chlorophyll A molecules donate their electrons to the primary electron acceptor. All right, so let's go over the entire flow of electrons as we go through the light dependent reactions here. So steps one and two that we see here are what we just talked about in the previous slide. So when you look at this here, we're basically seeing that we have our Photon striking a pigment molecule, passing on the energy until it gets to the chlorophyll A molecules here, and then they pass on their electrons to the primary electron acceptor. Now, we start in photosystem two, so the 
Chlorophyll A molecules in photosystem 2 are called P680, and they're the ones that are going to donate their electrons. So that's steps 1 and 2 of passing on the electrons here. Now, when these electrons get passed on, it creates what we call an electron hole. So the electrons that were here are now passed on to the primary electron acceptor. That means if this process starts again, the P680 isn't going to have electrons to pass on. When it passes on its electrons, it actually becomes P680+. plus. It's lost electrons and now it's positive, uh, but it's, it can't pass on electrons again. So the electron hole has to be filled and that's where step three comes in. So in step three, a water molecule is going to be used to fill in that electron hole. So the water molecule will be split using an enzyme. And when it becomes split, it creates hydrogen ions um, that are going to be released into the thylakoid space. Oxygen, so separating the hydrogens from the oxygen, you create oxygen that's going to be released from the plant. Um, or actually it's going to be, it could be passed on to um, the mitochondria so that way cellular respiration could occur. But the important thing is here, these two electrons are going to be passed on to the P680 to fill that electron hole. Now you could go through this process again, pass on electrons, more water molecules will be needed to donate their electrons and fill in their, that electron hole. Once we have our electrons here at the primary um, electron acceptor, they're going to be passed along an electron transport chain, just like we saw in cellular respiration. When you pass electrons on down an electron transport chain from um, an electronegative uh, protein or molecule, when it passes from one to the next, it releases some energy. In this electron transport chain, as it passes along the electrons, the energy released is going to pump hydrogen ions into the thylakoid space, so basically into a thylakoid. And um, once those electrons get in there, those electrons can be used for chemiosmosis, and the only way out of the thylakoid space is going to be out through ATP synthase, and just like we learned in cellular respiration, when the hydrogen ions pass through the ATP synthase, that's going to um, provide energy that allows ADP and phosphate to join together and form ATP. So this whole electron transport chain uh, pumps first the hydrogen ions into the thylakoid space, and then as they leave through ATP synthase to generate your ATP. Step six, we have a photon striking a pigment within the light harvesting complex of photosystem two. And same thing's gonna happen, it's gonna do the whole exciting electrons passing on energy until it gets to the two chlorophyll A molecules in the center complex here. Um, these are called P700. So these chlorophyll A molecules are also going to donate their electrons to a primary acceptor. Same thing that happened in photosystem two, when they donate their electrons, that creates an electron hole. And these electrons that came from photosystem two that got passed along this electron transport chain, they are going to be the ones that replace the electrons that were lost. So they're the ones that are gonna fill the electron hole. So you can imagine light strikes, the energy is absorbed and passed along. Uh, once it gets here, passes the electrons to the primary electron acceptor, and those electrons get replaced from the ones that come down the first electron transport chain. All right, step seven. From the primary electron acceptor in photosystem one, the electrons are gonna move down a second electron transport chain. As they move down the electron transport chain, no protein or hydrogen um, ion gradient is created here. So there's, there's no pumping of hydrogen ions in or out of the thylakoid. Um, it's just passing the electrons along. But when the electrons get to the end of this electron transport chain, there is a protein, an enzyme called NADP plus reductase. And when they get there, the AT NADP plus reductase will catalyze um, the connection of the hydrogen of a hydrogen ion and the two electrons onto NADP plus, thereby making NADPH. So basically all the NADP plus reductase does is help put the electrons and the hydrogen onto the NADPH, and uh, now we have our energy stored there. Uh, and that could be used for as a reducing agent later on, as a reducing power later on. All right, now you're gonna see this picture in just about every single textbook uh, when you're talking about 
uh, photosynthesis. So you see photosystem one, uh, photon energy is absorbed, passed along. We have our electrons at a high uh, energy state here. They get passed down a electron transport chain and that is going to help generate ATP. Here in photosystem one, the electrons become excited once again to a higher state and then eventually they are passed on to your NADPH through the second electron transport chain. Here's another way of looking at it, and I would say kind of a better way, it kind of puts in perspective as to where all this is going on. So here, um, this is basically a thylakoid, okay? And just like all membranes, you see our lipids and we see proteins as part of it here. Um, so this is the membrane of a thylakoid. So if you picture thylakoids being stacked up in a granum here, okay? Uh, this, what we're seeing here, is if you zoomed in on these lines. So that's the thylakoid membrane that we see there. And then we see our photosystem uh, two, our first electron transport chain composed of these three components here, our photosystem one, and then our second electron transport chain, and our NADP plus reductase at the end. So going through the steps real quick, looking at this, Photon uh, hits a pigment, excites the electrons, passes it to the uh, chlorophyll A, the P680 in photosystem 2, donates the electron. The electrons that have been donated get replaced from electrons from uh, water. The electrons from the primary electron acceptor get passed along here, the electron transport chain. As it passes the electrons down the electron transport chain, um, the energy as the electrons get passed along, that energy is used to pump hydrogen ions in and create a hydrogen ion gradient or a proton gradient. And that pumps the hydrogens, uh, hydrogen ions into the thylakoid space here. The only way for these hydrogen ions to get out of the thylakoid space is to go through ATP synthase. And we know that when hydrogens go through ATP synthase, this is chemiosmosis, the movement of those hydrogen ions through the ATP synthase is going to provide energy that allows ADP and phosphate to connect together and form our ATP. So that's the, the whole first part of um, the light dependent reactions here going down that first electron transport chain. If we zoom in on the second portion, we see um, light again, light energy being absorbed here, passed along, electrons being donated. The electrons that are donated from the P700 chlorophyll A's here uh, get replaced from the electrons from photosystem two. The electrons move down the second electron transport chain to the ATP, uh, I'm sorry, NADP plus reductase, which uh, puts the electrons plus the hydrogen ion onto NADP plus, making our NADPH. Both the NADPH and the ATP will then be used in the Calvin cycle. So we've done what we needed to do. We've converted the energy, solar energy, into chemical energy now stored in ATP and NADPH. All right. If you look at this, some key things that you wanna be able to notice just right off the bat and things that pop in your head is the importance of water. So the water is used as an electron donor to fill the electron hole in your P600 in photosystem two. And um, as a result of donating the electrons, hydrogens and ions become, the hydrogen and the oxygen become separated and your oxygen is going to be released in the process. The first electron transport chain is gonna pump the hydrogen ions into the thylakoid space and create a hydrogen or protein ion, uh, hydrogen ion gradient or a proton gradient. And that will be used to drive chemiosmosis in the production of ATP. Second electron transport chain is going to be used to pass on the electrons to your NADP plus and create your NADPH. And that is everything, um, the basics for the light dependent reactions.